Welcome to the channel everyone, in today's video I'll be talking about the best web hosting platforms, covering their price, speed, features, and other areas that will help you make your decision. Fortunately, when talking about the top of the line web hosting platforms, we don't need to look any further than Bluehost and Hostinger. However, a key difference between them is that Hostinger is more beginner friendly with their HPanel and Zyro website builder, while Bluehost uses WordPress integration to host their sites, which requires a bit more technical knowledge. But they both provide three hosting packages of which two are the same, that being shared web hosting and VPS hosting, and the others being cloud hosting for Hostinger and dedicated hosting on Bluehost. I also found the best available deals for both Hostinger and Bluehost and put them in the description below, giving you guys site-wide discounts and helping you get started with whichever one you choose. Alright, so the shared web hosting is the best option for beginners, regardless of the platform you choose, since they're just cheaper. The reason for the low price is because shared web hosting is stored on a shared server, so resources are limited and providers lower the price. Regardless of both platforms, the plans start at $3, but then they diverge and Hostinger says I'm stopping at 9 and Bluehost keeps going to $14 for their most expensive plan in this tier, which is also something you should keep in mind, on average Bluehost is more expensive than Hostinger. If we just look at their cheapest plans, Hostinger dwarfs Bluehost's one website and 10 gigabytes of SSD with 100 sites and 100 gigabytes of SSD, not to mention the necessary weekly backups, SSL certificate, and firewall to keep your site secure. Even Bluehost's most expensive tier struggles to come close to that. You should also know that both offer cheaper prices if you opt for a long-term plan. For Bluehost shared web hosting, you could save $145 when you pick the three-year plan as opposed to the 12-month one where you'd be spending $323. And if you end up not liking it, then the refund policy includes 30 days on all plans, excluding the domain registration fees. Hostinger is more flexible on term, however, as you can choose to pay monthly, annually, as well as every two to four years. The longer it is, the less you pay over the course of that period. The refund policy, however, is more specific on what they won't refund, such as domain name renewals or VPS licenses. But when it comes to plans, all of them are refundable within 30 days. Now, if you want something that also shares a server, but you get your own separate section of that server with more dedicated resources, then VPS hosting is a better choice. This is the best next step for those of you who began with shared hosting and want to scale up. This is where the decision gets less obvious because both offer strong plans, but the prices are drastically different. However, there are some possible extra fees with Hostinger because of their bandwidth restrictions. It ranges from 1 to 8 terabytes depending on the plan, but in the case that your site requires more bandwidth over the course of any given month, you will have to pay that extra bit. Consider it like your phone data. You can go over, but you still have to pay as opposed to Bluehost unmetered bandwidth that is flexible in case your site requires more of it. Granted, one terabyte is enough for most sites, but it is something worth keeping in mind. And to throw another bit of conversation into the mix, you should also consider the CPU, because Bluehost uses physical CPUs that are from your computer, the physical components within your system, while Hostinger uses vCPUs, which are virtual CPUs stored on a server. CPUs are generally better for dealing with high traffic and performance, and vCPUs are better for scalability. They're both efficient, but when it comes to the traffic side of things, your vCPU depends on the strength of your CPU, so it's a double-edged sword really. However, one interesting thing to note is that even though Bluehost uses the stronger CPU, it still has a lower uptime than Hostinger over the past 6 months, and uptime is the stability of sites on a platform. And in that time, Hostinger has maintained 100% 5 times, while Bluehost has not done it once. So, in terms of features, I still give the edge to Bluehost for VPS hosting, but all those features don't count for nothing if your site is down. So it's really a choice between reliability and power. Then we have the two outliers in our plans, cloud and dedicated hosting. Kicking things off with cloud, this is much better for server reliability because unlike the previous two, cloud hosting is set up on multiple points, so it is much better at dealing with traffic spikes. It shares the workload on multiple servers, so if one is down or strained, it then transfers that work to another server and maintains your site's stability. It has all the same perks as shared hosting, just more of it, along with NVMe storage, which is 10 times faster than SSD storage, something that Bluehost doesn't include in any of their plans. 
Therefore, cloud hosting is for people with larger sites and want to work with more resources. As for dedicated hosting, this is where you have a whole server to yourself. And while this costs a lot more, you do get the resources. For most of you out there, I wouldn't imagine that you would need something like this at the moment. Dedicated hosting is for very large websites who require all the possible features and stability. So simply put, this is the best hosting plan for someone in that position. I can't compare it with Hostinger because it doesn't offer a comparable since it's more tailored to beginners. And the last thing to consider is the customer service because when you're in a right, you want to know that the provider has your back. And with Bluehost, they offer a pretty comprehensive range of options, whether it's 24-7 chat support or over the phone. You can even email specific departments to receive more specialized help. Hostinger lacks the phone support, but their 24-7 chat is very helpful. Actually, a few days ago, I needed help with some domain issues I was having, and they were super quick to get back to me, and it was resolved within 15 minutes. So while they don't have phone support, that doesn't mean it's any less helpful. As for which one I would choose, I prefer Hostinger because I feel like it offers a lot more in terms of features and value for money, not to mention it's cheaper and, well apparently, a lot more stable. Granted, Bluehost is stronger in terms of VPS, but Hostinger's optimization makes it so that you can get to work on your site and hosting much sooner, and for the majority of people, they won't need to scale up right away, so the strength of Bluehost's offering isn't exactly necessary if your site doesn't absolutely need it, especially if you're a beginner. Be being forced to learn WordPress right away can be challenging. But fortunately, I do have tutorials for WordPress and Hostinger to help you get started, as well as a review for Bluehost and Hostinger. So you can check those out in the description below for some more info. And with that, we wrap up today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, then consider hitting the like button and subscribing to help us keep the lights on over here. If you have any further questions for me, then don't hesitate to ask them down below. Also, don't forget those offers I placed in the description if you do choose to go with either of these providers. At any rate, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time, take care.